Crucible went live last week, and Valorant launches June 2nd. All that and more, my name is Ethos, and this is Free to Play Weekly. First off in the news this week, this week's free offering from Epic Games is one of those rare titles that even after 4 years of being available is still available at the keepsake price of $60. The popular turn-based strategy game from Firaxis Games, Sid Meier's Civilization VI, is up for grabs until May 28th. Between now and June 11th, players not only have a chance to pick up some games at a pretty deep discount, but also snag a AAA game for nothing every week. Of course, as with most free offerings on EGS, this does not include DLC or upgrades, but thanks to the current sale, players can grab the Platinum Edition upgrade for half the normal cost. The upgrade includes six Civilization and Scenario DLC packs and the Rise and Fall and Gathering Storms expansions. Last week, Shadow Arena, Pearl Abyss's Black Desert Online themed take on the Battle Arena genre, entered Early Access on Steam. The game pits players against one another in a winter take-it-all fantasy combat using magic and medieval weaponry. Not only do players fight each other, but in keeping with BDO theme, they will also find themselves taking down powerful creatures in order to earn loot and boosts that will aid them in defeating their creatures. During Early Access, players will be able to choose from one of 10 different heroes ranging from Jordine Dukas to Badal the Golden. It also features a quest system and 6 game modes including solos, teams, dueling grounds, custom normals, and AI matches. And while more will be added later, the game already boasts language support for 14 languages for countries in each of the 4 available server regions, North America, South America, Asia, and Europe. Those who download the Early Access will be able to take part in the beta session that tracks ranked matches. Top players will be rewarded with a variety of prizes. Beta is almost over and it's time for Valorant to enter the gaming universe for reals. Riot Game announced that its free-to-play competitive shooter will launch nearly worldwide on June 2nd, which means you'll probably no longer have to watch streams to play it. Probably. In talking about its transition from beta to launch, Riot has had an honest conversation about what went right and what went wrong, and what still needs to be done moving forward. First on that list was Vanguard, the game's anti-cheat software which has taken its lumps in its intrusiveness. In response, Riot has made a number of changes to the system, and while it's still good at tracking cheaters, it hasn't been doing much in regards to banning them. That's going to change with launch, as the full auto-banning suite will be rolled out. Until now, ban waves were done manually. Come launch, we'll see a more aggressive, widespread, and automated system in our ability to detect and ban cheaters, Riot said. But Riot did admit that the system will not be 100% perfect, but it will still keep doing what it can to keep things moving smoothly. In terms of our favorite thing while playing multiplayer games, in-game toxicity, Riot acknowledges that it's been too slow and plans to implement automated analysis of chat violations and reports of offenders. Other topics on this checklist include more servers coming online to help with ping and a general notion of how game balance is progressing. One interesting subject is the prospect of another game mode being added on the horizon to balance out the intense nature of a typical Valorant match. That's expected to come online shortly at launch or shortly thereafter, with other new features such as new agents, maps, skins are also planned for later this year. And to follow that up, it looks like the project manager Jared Burbach did confirm that the new mode will not be deathmatch, though he does know the demand for it and the team is working on it. Alright, so Battle Royale title The Calling has had a long and sordid history. Originally it was launched as a buy-to-play game before Battle Royales exploded, and it garnered a fair amount of critical acclaim before the developers elected to abandon it in favor for a sequel, which was as popular as Apex Legends Mozambique Gun. The original went free-to-play shortly thereafter before shutting its servers down for good a year ago. Now it looks like it's back once again with as the original game dubbed as The Calling Origins, and it returned to Xbox One on May 14th, while the team was working on a PC version in the near future. It won't be free to play, costing $5.99, and it will be accompanied by a one day free trial if you want to check it out before purchasing. On the flip side, if you own The Calling while it's free to play, well, you'll still get the new version for free. But here's the catch, you're gonna have to pay if you want to play it. Okay, so check this out. Players can participate in one free match per day, but will need online match tokens to play more. And you'll get one from winning a match. Otherwise, you're going to have to buy more tokens. 3 for a dollar, 10 for $3, and 20 for $5, or 30 days for $6 passes for unlimited play. Xavient said in its press release that it's shifted their monetization approach to ensure players will be able to visit the island for years to come. Now. Why they didn't just go with more acceptable routes of a season pass or optional cosmetics is a valid question to ask. Maybe because they were more difficult to implement, but it's hard to imagine Battle Royale players being happy with per-match fees or an MMORPG-styled system. 
inexpensive as it is. And it seems like I was right because following this extremely negative reception, Xavian had increased the number of free battles per day to 10. And Director of Operations Joss Van Veld told PC Gamer that the reason for the restrictive payment model was because he was kind of terrified at the game servers being overwhelmed, which is what happened. We onboarded a million new players very quickly when the calling first went free to play on PC. It maxed out at 1,459 concurrent players, so yeah. It looks like the servers for the Amazon Game Studios and Relentless Studios Crucibles are now live. That means now you have a chance to try out their brand new free-to-play shooter, Crucible, which has been getting quite a bit of a marketing push these past couple of weeks. And while some of it has been well received, some of it not so much. The company seems at least self-aware of the likelihood that it will make mistakes and it's willing to learn from them. From a recent interview with PC Games N, project lead Colin Johansson said that when we screw up, and we will, everyone does, and we're honest and forthright about what has happened and what we learned. Now he's probably talking about gameplay, but it's also nice to see that the marketing team has also adapted over the last couple of weeks. Now if they only improve the description of the top of the game Steam page. Johansson offered some insight into the game's monetization, which will consist of a season pass as well as a rotating inventory of items, which you can purchase directly from a cash shop. Naturally, he states that these games are not pay to win, and the cash shop's currency will be called credits, and if you log in by June the 2nd, you can get a thousand of them for absolutely free. In any case, you can check out Crucible right now. And that moves us to the question of the week. With Crucible now being launched and everyone able to play it, let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the game? Do you enjoy it? Is it not for you? Do you despise it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's it for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name is Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.